Got the left forward tail cone skin put in place. Got a cleat cut along the back and then got a little clamp drawn down on the corner here. Just kind of pull it tight. Seen that on uh, Eddie's video. He actually has a series, about four or five part series on these skins that I watched uh, last night along with some other S21 YouTube builders. And uh, anyways, I got this drawn down tight here. So what I'll do now is come in here and match drill through these holes into the support, the angled support that's in there. in place there. Now I need to get these holes across the bottom and for that I'm just going to come in from the inside and match drill here all the way across. Got all those put in. Now what I need to do is get these across the top. And you can see I already did that on the right side. And um, all I did was just used a long, my 12 inch long bit and just got in here from the inside and just got those. It's a little tricky because you're kind of trying to reach in there. And it's probably also helpful that I'm six foot four with long arms because I can reach up in there and, and do that. Eddie's uh, video showed, and it seems like a really good idea. You take a piece of clear Lexan uh, and you tape it here before the skin is there. And you mark all those holes, you flip that up, set the skin down and bring that clear Lexan over and then you can see where all your holes are and then you drill it. You can check out his video, you can see how he does it. But I don't have any clear Lexan and I can reach this. So it just makes more sense to actually use the hole that's there for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match drill through the stringer uh, through both skins down the center seam there. And what I want to do, because this this isn't this position isn't really established yet, but this is the center of the frame here. So I'll line up the holes of the stringer with this point here. Drill this first one here clico it and then I'll just work my way down. Got all those drilled. Now what I want to do is I want to fish the stringer, the one that goes all the way down the tail cone there. I'm going to fish that one down, get that clico in place. I'll do the other one that goes down that side and then I'll, I'll do the short ones, the ones that start back there at station uh, five, come through station four and end up here at three.
fit the spacer strip up here and drilled drilled down from the top, match drilled through it. So that's all set in place. And then also the side strip here, I've got that in place. I recommend putting this window frame in first, just click out in place, because you can see where if this was, if this strip was a little too far aft, it would interfere. I've got these skins all drilled, Clecoed, everything is fit. There are no other holes that need to be drilled. I have drilled a lot. Look at all this mess in here. It's crazy. A lot of drilling. But all the stringers, all of the support strips on the side, across the top, everything's drilled out. And I've gone in and I've marked my straight line that I need to trim. See the black Sharpie? That's the line. You know, they oversize those sheets so that you can trim them to follow this line here. So if you come back here, this line goes straight up. And you can see my black line there carries that same line. So I need to trim that. I'll probably take that over to the shear and shear that. Um, but yeah, it's ready to come apart, deburr everything go back together. You'll notice I've done all the gray paint in here. This is this is the finished interior of my airplane. It's just going to be the gray. And I've gone through and I made sure I painted all the interior skins that are going to be visible. And everything pretty much forward of station four. Of course these get covered up so that's why those aren't painted there but um, yeah it's it's ready to go. So let's see all in for these, the left side and the right side, these forward skins, in terms of time, I believe I have about, about six hours in getting all of that fit. Not too bad. I've got one of these skins deburred here. And what I'm doing now is I'm going in and forming the edges. And I'm using a combination of my forming tools here. This one is the one I use the most. It's for nice long straight runs. So I've done all the edges, all the way around the perimeter. But then I decided I also wanted to do the window opening. For that one, I use this one. This lets you get into to curves and do the whole thing there. So you can see I've got a nice edge all the way around, like so. If we look at it from the other side, we can see, yeah, there we go. Got a nice edge all the way around. And that's just gonna be good for, for holding the, the skin to the window because the rivet spacing for the window frame and the window is spread out quite a bit. And I wanna make sure that I don't get any lifting in between there and I want a nice tight seal. This is the same thing I do with the Cessna Patroller door kits that I make uh, when I, like, it's kinda hard to see, but, um, I make these patrol door kits for 150s, and part of the process, when you cut, cut out that opening in the door skin, you want to edge roll around the opening, you know, for just watertight seal, just, just overall a nice look. Um, so, doing the same thing here. Um, so, this one is basically ready. Uh, just a little bit more cleanup to do, and I'll get working on the other one. For these skins, when they come down here, the last rivet stops here. You can't really get any riveting tools in here to pull rivets. And I noticed that my skin kind of bunch or bubbles up here just a little bit. There's a little bit of a bow there. Now you won't really see it because the window ends here and it's way back in the corner, but I thought, you know what? Um, let me take some of this really thin 3M tape, double-sided tape, and just put a strip of it here. I've already done it on that side. Degreased it really well, both the skin and the lingeron click of that in place and just pressed it down and it seems to hold. Um, will it hold, you know, for years and years? Probably, don't know, but I figured it wouldn't hurt and help kind of keep that skin down. Before I do any riveting of the top skins, which I'm about ready for, I want to make sure I rivet these in here. So I've got my uh, support channel up under there and I'm going to go ahead and, and rivet this. Um, 
I almost didn't think about this. I was starting to put my skin on. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it could be done, I suppose. It's just a little hard to get to um, with the skin right here. I'm gonna rivet these in place and then I'm gonna start bringing the skins over. I've got the front right skin already put in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one in. Everything has been cleaned up, deburred, and it's time to pop this one on, and this will be for the last time. This will close this section out. So uh, I'll go ahead and get this thing set into place. As I'm fitting the skin here, I'm noticing there's a pretty good gap right there. And if I let the rivet take it down, I'm gonna have a dip right here. So I fabricated a shim that's gonna fit. It's gonna be tricky to get it in there, but go to the next hole set. Right there, get my pick pick in there and find that hole, a click of that, but that pushes it out and then I get the, the distance I need there. So I may have to do that over there. I'll have to go take a look. This one seems okay. Got a Clico directly to that support and it doesn't, doesn't feel like it's wanted to pull it in. I think that one I'm gonna leave alone. I've got everything fit, everything click out in place. I trimmed my, or I sheared this skin earlier this morning. So I've got a nice straight line running up. Everything in here looks good. I've got these riveted in place. So I think that I'm ready, I think I'm ready to rivet this. It's one of those things again where I'm like, okay, make sure I don't forget anything. Got all my edges formed. Don't think there's anything left to do but rivet. Got the right side of the skin all riveted up. I haven't done the top yet, but I did the back here, came across up here, um, did these down and then these out. And I uh, got my stainless rivets here and on the cage tabs. I really like how these stainless ones, they really draw in and create a super strong connection. So, I'll work on getting the top done and I'll move over to the left side. Well, here she is. The tail cone is complete. It's done. <laughs> what, a, what a great day. Finishing up these forward tail cone skins here uh, most of the day today. And I'm just so happy with how everything turned out. All of my lines are just so nice and clean. Um, all the joints just really came out. I mean, everything just fit. <sighs> Tail go.
cone is done. I was so stressed about the tail cone. Putting the top skins on was like such a, such a stressful thing. I didn't want to do it, but once I got going, uh, everything was fine. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. So happy with that. So tomorrow I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put it on its wheels. I'm going to put it on the landing gear. Um, now I'm going to start doing things like putting the rudder pedals, the control sticks, um, all this, all the detail work inside. I'm going to start working on that. What a moment. I'm so, I can't even express how happy I am that everything just came together. Um, Rands makes a great kit. Everything just fits. Very few areas where you gotta, gotta do a little head scratching. I mean, it happens. Um, but for the most part, you're able to work your way through it. All right, I'm just gonna keep rambling on about how happy I am. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take off for now.